Melissa Farrah Griffin, who was Trump's communications director, posted yesterday and said that you were present at a moment when Trump suggested executing the person who leaked information that he went to the White House bunker when those George Floyd protests were happening outside the White House. Do you remember that? I remember him being very mad about that. I actually don't remember him saying executing, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't dispute it. You know, I mean, it doesn't sound. I mean, the president would lose his temper and say things like that. I, I doubt he would have actually carried it out. I don't, you know. You were there, they say, to hear the president say, "I'm going to kill that guy," and you're like, "Yeah, I don't remember that, but." I don't know, he said stuff like that all the time, so I can't dispute it. He probably wouldn't actually kill the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dictatorship is so funny. Who says comedy is dead? Anyway, little follow up then. If this guy was saying stuff like that, is that worrying to you, Bill Barr? Take a look. But, but he would say that on other occasions? You said the he was president, you know, the president had a. Uh, I think people sometimes took him too literally, and and you know he would say things like similar to that in in occasions to blow off steam. Uh, but I wouldn't take him literally every time he did it. Why not? Because at the end of the day, it wouldn't be carried out, and you could talk sense. But just because it's not carried out, and you could talk sense into him, doesn't that still mean that the the threat is there? No, I mean I, I think. Uh, I, I don't think the threat is there. I, I, you know, I, I, the thing that uh, I worry about President Trump is not that he's going to become an autocrat and do those kinds of things. Why not? Because I don't think he would but at the end of the day. What's the basis for that, that, that understanding that you have? Well, or is it just your own hunch? That's my feeling, having worked for him and, and seen him in action. I don't think he would actually go and kill political rivals and things like that. That's fun. Uh, I want to add a couple of interesting bits of context to that. First of all, I love the idea that as a member of opposition media, my hope that I won't be murdered should rely on Bill Barr's hunch. He has a hunch that Donald Trump won't become a dictator. That is comforting. So first of all, bear in mind, just last week, Donald Trump's lawyer argued before the Supreme Court that he could legally order the assassination of political rivals. So he's saying it behind the scenes. His lawyers are literally arguing for it before the Supreme Court. But Bill Barr has a hunch. That's true. Also, bear in mind that Bill Barr says he'll vote for Trump in 2024. He supports him, despite the fact that he's just casually blowing off steam by talking about killing people. And and I just want to really quick, we don't normally do this live during the show, but I want to give a blue apron gift card to Jasper Katz. In the uh, Twitch chat, who said, if I said that at my workplace to blow off steam, I would be fired. Why can he? Right? You, if I worked at Angelino's Italian restaurant as a busboy, if I had blown off steam talking about killing one of the customers, I wouldn't be allowed to gather up dishes anymore. You can't do that if you're a busboy. How can you do that if you're a president? And Barr's one of the guys who was critical of Trump, and he's apologizing for the casual references to killing those he disagrees with. But don't worry, again, he has a hunch that he won't become a dictator. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Listen, in order for the damage report to keep on going, we need viewers like you to become a member on YouTube. Can you click the join button on YouTube today? Thank you. Francesca. No one's coming to save us, guys. That that's just my thought, my thought on this is Barr decided to turn on Trump because he felt like there must be some amount of accountability for what happened on January 6th and he didn't want to throw down with the wrong side of history. But now that the wrong side of history might actually win another election, he's like, yeah, I could do that. And for me, I always come back to Stephen Miller. There's a reason that nobody interviews Stephen Miller, Trump's, you know, whatever he is, national security advisor, advisor, um, you know, right wing, right hand troll. Because <laughs> Stephen Miller literally says the thing. He's like, there's nothing wrong with rounding up protesters if they are, uh, you know, defying and defiling American democracy. Like he will say, you know, the thing and just be like, yeah, yeah, we're doing that. And everyone else has to make excuses for why that's not serious. They wouldn't do that. Yeah. When you see right now, you know, universities calling the cops on their student protesters who want an end to the genocide in Gaza. Like, imagine. 
if Donald Trump were, were in office, right? It'd be only worse, and it's difficult to imagine it being any worse, because honestly, Biden is utterly messing up this moment. Um, but it can, and Trump yeah. would relish in it. Um, Trump would be like, yeah, open fire, let's go. Like, no more of these like flex cuffs. Uh, like, let's get some real artillery in there. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. Look, I I think that and I talked about this in the preport this morning. We should always be able to argue both sides. It's it's a it's a mark of I think you know being a critical thinker. If you want to have hope that Donald Trump will not be the guy who kills his political opponents or whatever, I can provide you a small amount of hope about that. Uh, but it's not that he's not truly that guy or that the checks and balances will be there. Uh, this is what I have left at the end of the day. He's really lazy and he's easily distracted. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it won't happen. That's it. No norms, no laws, not the SCOTUS, nothing. That, that's it. And, and honestly, I don't even have much faith in that because again, he has, he used to have a lot of terrible people and some people who were terrible but weren't necessarily willing to set fire to the Capitol or whatever. Now he's just going to have really terrible people and terrible people like Stephen Miller, who you can't tell me that that guy hasn't at some point masturbated while fantasizing about being a Nazi. Like yeah. the worst people you can imagine as, as this is not a claim of truth. This is, and I don't wanna be crass, so I apologize in advance. Uh, but Brett Ehrlich once said that in high school, Stephen Miller's girlfriend clearly hooked up with a Mexican guy and that just doomed us all to fascism. And I think that yeah. that's kind of what's going on here. It's the sort of people that they have no higher aspiration than to be one of the foot soldiers for the utter annihilation and dismantling of American democracy and our way of life and our culture. And I know that that sort of thing is thrown around very casually. I don't think it's true of everyone. I think Lindsey Graham is a willing fool or whatever. I don't think that he dreams of ending democracy or whatever, but there are people like that. There are a lot of people who are fully willing to go along. J.D. Vance has already made that devil's bargain. He got a little bit of power and he's willing to end what America is. And then there's people like Stephen Miller that that is the only reason that they see themselves, the reason they see themselves being alive. And so- I mean, and the wild thing is the media, right? It's like, when is the media gonna stop pretending that the other side are not just out and out fascists and they're just waiting, you know? And it. It stems from the fact that Biden still probably feels that the Republican Party is gonna have some grand epiphany. Remember the epiphany? Where's the epiphany? Still waiting, Joe, for the right nope. to have an epiphany about Donald Trump. Not happening. They, they're like allowed to have a dream of an epiphany if the next Trump election is four years out and maybe he'll have a heart attack. And right? that's it. Right? And as soon as we're getting closer, there is no one who is going to take Trump out. Trump's circulatory system might take himself out, that might save us. But other than that, there is no hero on the right. There are a few critics, Liz Cheney or whatever, Kinzinger, they're willing to criticize him, admittedly. But they can't take him out. They might be willing to take him out, but they can't do it. Other people might be able to, but aren't willing to do it. That's what we're left of, those two categories of people, and neither is gonna save us. I'll remind you, by the way, that Bill Barr, who's continuing to support Donald Trump in that interview over the weekend, when he announced last week that despite saying that Trump was not qualified to be president again, that he would vote for him. Do you remember what he posted on True Social about Bill Barr, Donald Trump? Yeah. He had called him weak, slow moving, lethargic, gutless, and lazy based on the fact that I greatly appreciate his wholehearted endorsement. I am removing the word lethargic from my statement. Thank you, Bill. He called him a fat tub of lard again. And Bill Barr's like, hit me again if that's what it takes. Just keep hitting me. Again, Donald Trump could walk onto the, the, the set. Zip down his fly and pee in Bill Barr's head, and oh he would still support it becoming president again. <laughs> Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen, and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.